Again, good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Those of you that are watching on YouTube and subscribers, Happy Mother's Day. And um, as I say this, I'm not going to get the going against the masses. Uh, Mother's Day is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, and uh, God bless you. And you know, as we continue in this, you know, the tradition of man always tell us of things that what we what has been set up and things that we should do. But you know, when God has saved us and brought us into this new life of what we just read about uh, and what we will read about uh, on today, when we in a new life, things change. Mothers, mothers should be recognized and should be celebrated. And um, you know, I'm thankful that we can set a time aside for, for uh, the different holidays. Uh, but when it comes to the ministry, when it comes to the Word of God, we need the Word of God. We need to be empowered. We don't need to set things aside to put people, uh, I want to say on pedestals, but give them a special day is what I'm trying to say. Scripture doesn't teach us that. And, you know, uh, false teaching is just not from men. It's from women also. So, you know, when we are, when we are in a new, this new life that Christ has given us, as long as we stay with what he has told us to do, be in his will and his purpose and stay in his word, we won't get caught up in the masses. You know, I'm not going to speak on right or wrong. I will speak on what the word of God has said. There's no holidays in the scriptures. Church, that's just true. There's no holidays in the scripture. So because there's no holidays in the scripture, let's just stick with the scripture. Let's keep it simple. And, uh, you know, as we continue on, you know, because this, again, as we... We see where the church is, is, is faced with, where they're faced with false teaching. And there's some, there some things that, that's going to be mentioned that, uh, and we'll see basically why the divorce and, and it has creeped over into the church. Because when we're not teaching what God has instructed us to teach, when we put secular words into, 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 into try to compare the two and we're in a meal of them we're going to come out with false teaching mm -hmm. it's inevitable that's what we're going to do and 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 we have to keep in mind now as i say this even before we get here when the question we was even asking jesus of marriage what did he say moses permit this because the heart is of your heart and those are the things that we have to keep in mind it's the hardening of the heart when we go against god and when we go against god Church, we're going to sin. It's inevitable because we're not following him. We're not obeying him. We're going to go against him. So as we pick up in verse 14, it says, For the love, <clears throat> for the love of Christ compel us because we judge this, that if one dies for all, then all die. And he died for all, that those who live shall live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and, and rose again. That's verse 14 and 15. Now you see how this reads, we're no longer ourselves. Now that we're in Christ, we live for Christ. How did Christ teach? How did Christ preach? What was his example? He never mentioned anything about holidays. Or set things aside to give someone special services. So when we see these things, we have to question ourselves. Are we truly in the will of God or do we, are we abiding in him? Again, this is not to go against no one. This is what we've been taught. The question that I have is how did they get there when it's not related to the scripture? Let's turn to Psalm. We're going to flip back and forth here for a second. Psalms 86. Psalm 86, verse 15. 
And this is how we know that God continued to speak to us even in time past. When we see when we read this scripture, it says, But you, O Lord, are a God full of compassion and gracious, long suffering and abundance in mercy and truth. And let's go to John 3.16, although we don't have to turn there because we all of us should memorize that by heart. Because this is the one thing that we have to keep in mind as we read this, even though we know it. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. It's the love of God that God showed us that mercy, that goodness, just we just read in Psalms, in truth. So when we have this, and we know this, and we've obtained this, our lives change, our thoughts change, because the scriptures tell us our mind is to be renewed day by day. Amen? And then John chapter 16, verse 15. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I say, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. When Jesus was saying this to his disciples, what he was telling them is because he's getting ready uh, to departure and the Holy Spirit is coming. Everything that he had spoken to them and what he's saying to them now the Father is going to reveal it to them. How is he going to reveal it? Through the Holy Spirit. I just want you to keep the pattern of the love of God throughout all these scriptures. And one chapter over, chapter 17, verses 1 through 5. Jesus spoke these words. Lift up his eyes to heaven and say it. Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son also may glorify you, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with you, with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the foundation, before the world, before with you before the world was. So when we see this and when we read this, Jesus is talking back to the Father to remind him of what they had before the world. That union and that family uh, orient of what they had. He is telling us, this is what we're going to obtain in him. So as he prayed for this, he said glorify. Now, if we are to glorify him, what is the one way of glorifying God? Being faithful and obedient to him. Being in his will. And we, how are we going to know that? We have to be in God's word. We have to be taught it. It has to be preached. It has to be evangelized. We have to make disciples. These are all the things that we see that Jesus is reminding us. He's telling us in the scripture. But it's a reminder when we engraft it. That makes sense, church? Because now, when you don't know any better, you're going to do what you think you know. But when you obtain knowledge... Because we already know in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is beginning of wisdom. So when God gives us wisdom, our whole lives change. It's not that we don't celebrate or we don't uh, enjoy life, because he said the abundant life. But that's not the important thing for us. We don't put uh, accolades and we don't go uh, beyond our means of, of bringing, because that self-gratification is what it is. Because after this day, when it concerning mothers, what about the rest of the year? Mothers are still mothers. Mm -hmm. They still do a lot. Mm -hmm. So 
I don't, I, this, I, this ministry, this church, this pastor don't want to mislead anyone in thinking that they don't have significance. Mm -hmm. All of us that are in Christ have significance. Amen. And we all have a part. Mm -hmm. And these parts have to be in the right standing to please and glorify our Heavenly Father. Amen. So these are the things that I'm talking about. It doesn't make, it doesn't, this may sound like it, it may, uh, or where I'm coming against or I'm against, no, nothing. According to the scripture, we're all Christians here. This is not a debate. This is not an issue. What I'm trying to say is this. What have we read? Everything that we're reading, we're reading about Jesus Christ and God the Father, the Holy Spirit. This is our life now. If we're, good to, if we're going to give honor to God, then we'll be able to honor those that are in the body of Christ. Because he tells us, give honor to whom honor is due. That's another believer. So when we see these things, what are we really thinking? What are we really in, being, being caught up in? Or no, ensnared in or being sidetracked with? Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. I'm sorry. First John. First John. First John. Chapter 3, verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know him, know us, because it does not know him. You, you see again how, how, how he are giving us the assurance of who we are in him. Let's turn back to John chapter, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. says, though I speak with tongues of men and other of angels but have not love, I have become sounding brass or clinging cymbal. And though I have a gift of prophecy and understand all mystery, all knowledge, and though I have, have all faith so that I could remove mountains but not, but not have, but have not love, I have nothing. I want you to re just hear what is being said. It's love, love, love. But it's talking about God love. So this is a reminder for us. If we love God, we're going to hear the things of God. We won't be sidetracked or we won't be misled when it comes to teaching. So as we continue to hear this, where are we today? And then uh, back to Romans. Well, no, since we're here, Rome, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 15, 22. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ all shall be made alive, but each one in his own order. Christ, the first fruit, afterward, those who are Christ at his coming. That's the assurance there. Those of us that are in Christ. Because when he comes, we shall be like him. Right now, it's our spirit. 
But when once this body changes, we got to be like Christ. We're going to have a glorified body just like him. And, and again, Paul is reminding the church, this is who you are now. You don't have to continue to be, be caught up in this false teaching of what you're hearing from these Judaizers. Now, let's go back to Romans. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 through 11. This reads, but God demonstrated his own love towards us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if we, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Again, it's in Christ. The more we read these scriptures, the more we hear him, is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen? Amen. Verse 16 and 17. In 2 in Corinthians chapter 5. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, Yet now we know him, thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature or, an, or a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And this is what this is about. If we're children of God and we're honoring God and we're glorifying God, there's just things in the world we're just not going to do. It's not that we're going against. We're standing for something. If we're standing for truth, if light is shining and the word is going forth, it doesn't make you, it make you unique and different. Why? Because you're in a dark and fallen world. How can an unbeliever know that we're believers if we're participating in doing everything that they do? They can't see it. So those are the things that we have to be in mindful about ourselves. That when we're doing these things, who is being affected, really? Well, both parties are being affected because now you're hindering an unbeliever to come to heaven or see God for who he is. And then now, on your side as being a Christian, you're grieving the Holy Spirit because we're out of the will. We're not doing the thing. We're not being the example. We're not living the life. So these are the things that we have to be conscious of and aware of at all times because because we're in this world and we don't know church we just don't know who's watching us but people are watching you you don't you don't have to say anything going to the grocery store or just walking in the neighborhood you're being watched and, and that's not a a, a a saying that you should be fearing no they're watching you to see who you are not to meet you or it's like to greet you that way. No, they're watching your conduct. They're watching your attitude. They're watching what you say. They're watching. And when you say, well, well Pastor, how do you know that? Because when you stop and start talking to people, they'll give you your life story and they don't know you. Why do you think that happened? Why do you think it happened? It happened because they're searching. God is drawing. And when we don't pay attention, we miss it. We miss it. See, that's the working out of salvation. It's not just me coming to church and getting all I can get. 
See, the, the ministry is on the outside of the church. Yes. There's things to be done within the church, but the ministry is on the outside. Mm -hmm. That's what the harvest is. Mm -hmm. Because there's lost souls out here. And when we're not paying attention to it, we fall through those, I won't say we fall through the cracks, but we stumble. Amen? Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verses thir uh, 34 through 39. Romans chapter 8. Who is he who condemned? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, he also risen. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also make intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of, of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearls, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Again, we've obtained the love of God. And because we've obtained the love of God, we have safety. We have that hedge of protection. We're in God's hand, church. And nothing is going to happen to us. Whatever God takes us through, He's with us. There's nothing that's going to be before us that God has not prepared us for. The only way we're not prepared is because we have not did what he's asked us to do. We haven't prayed. We haven't seek him. Because he told us in Matthew, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto us. So these are the things that we're being reminded again. It is so relevant today for us to hear what God is saying today. God is not bringing something new. We're new in Him. He's always been. He's trying to enlighten us of who we are in Him. And when we see that and we not only gravitate to it, but actually start living it, our everything changes for us. It's not just our mind, it's our way of seeing, it's our way of hearing, it's our way of speaking. Everything changes. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 20. Therefore, I also, after I heard your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. You notice how Paul is encouraging the church of Ephesus 
And this is so encouraging today to even read this. This is what God is doing for us. This is what God, through the Son, from the Son, through the Holy Spirit, is doing for us today. So as I hear this and as I read it, I'm excited because more and more God is enlightening and revealing himself to us. We just have to see him for who he really is. We know we sing a song of, uh, uh, can we see God for who he really is? Uh, Colossians. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, and not on things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. You see the reminder here again. He's still talking about love, but now he's talking about what we've been engrafted into and what we're going to be like and then who we are. This is very encouraging and it's very uh, befitting even to this day you know, of what we have in Christ. Verse 18 through 21, and back to uh, 2 Corinthians 5. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and given us the ministry of reconciliation, that is, that God, who was in Christ, reconciled the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses, trespasses to them. And he and his and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleased through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. And, you know, we've read John 3, 16, and, uh, 16, 15, and 17, through 1 through 5. Again, it's about what God has done for us. And uh, let's turn to Romans 5. Romans chapter 5. Verse 11. Verse 10 and 11. For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. You see how this is lining up and how Paul is speaking? It's lining up with what he's uh, reminding the church of Corinth. And then uh, Romans 11. Verse 15. For if there be cast away in the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from death? And then 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 7.
verses 10 and 11. When, when Paul is reminding this church, you have to remember that the false teaching, this was about everything. And this is, this is the one thing where the enemy wants to get, because he knows he can disrupt family when this, this occurs. So this is what it reads in 1 Corinthians 7, 10 and 11. Now to the merit I command, yet not I, but the Lord. A wife is not to depart from her husband. But even if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. And a husband is not to divorce his wife. Why would you think that this is brought up or he would even say this? Because Paul is repeating what Jesus has said, even when the Pharisees ask him about the permission of divorce. Jesus said at the end, in the beginning, that was not so. Why do you think he said that? Because there's no divorce in God. We just read what can separate us, what God has joined together, let no man put us under. So if this is what God has done, and he's ordained marriage, why are we divorcing? It doesn't make sense. When we're not teaching it properly or teaching it the correct way, we'll, go, we'll, we'll fall into the masses. And that's where we get sidetracked. We can't do what the world do. And the unbeliever is a non-believer. We, 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 we can't say, we can't go, God, God, goo, goo, oh, I love you, and then years later we're divorcing, or months later we're divorcing. Church, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up. Because what that display is, God, we're saying that God is not who he is. And we know that's just not true. Because if God is in control today, if God is in control today, and we know that he is, that at some point this virus is going to uh, get past us, I think God can sustain marriage. Amen. So when, when, when we come to this, are we really, truly seeking him like we should? Verse 20 and 21, that same, verse, same passage. Here we go. Let each one remain in the same calling in which he were called. Were you, were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you, but if you can make, can be made free, rather use it. So what he's saying here is, regardless of how what God has pulled you out of. We are free from sin. We are free from the work of darkness. Our, our circumstance changed from within. But the circumstance on the outside, and this is what he's saying, if I'm a slave now that I'm a Christian, I'm free from the bondage of sin, but my, sla my, my slavery now, I still got to, that's an obligation now, that's a duty. So, I was like, well, what are you talking about, man? We, uh, the, the uh, slaves are, are, are purchased and they're bought. At the time, and this is what we have to, to still be enlightened on, slavery didn't just come from the African community or black community. Slavery was going on in, in Egypt from the children of Israel. That's when slavery actually started. And we know that comes from sin because that they was in, in slavery because of fear. The Egyptians thought that the, 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 the Hebrews was going to take over them because they was populating more. So fear brought slavery. So when you have a mind mentality like that, out of that fear, it's going to cause you to think different. You're going to have superior, you don't think you're superior more than someone else. See, the it, it, history. When, when we talk about history, we talk about black, 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 and slave, 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 Negro, Negro. This stuff started way before mm -hmm. then. And, 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 and the difference when it came over to us, now you, you, you're being auctioned off. But it just wasn't the black race. There was multiple races in <coughs> slavery. 
So when we make it about one race, we negating the human race. Everybody is affected, even a slave owner. He's affected. Why? Because he's locked up in his mind. He's not able to see who God really is. You're a slave to sin. You're not a slave. If we're going to be bond service and, and slaves, let's be it for Christ. Mm -hmm. This may sound just weird coming from me or just forfeits coming from me. All I know is this. is now that I've been enlightened about truth. Now that I've been enlightened about truth, it is so much better for me to live free. I don't have to get caught up in, this, in the verbiage. I don't have to get caught up at, or, or what's trying to come against me because I am assured who I am in Christ. And he, Christ has already prepared us for this. Church, we're going to suffer mm -hmm. because we are of his now. The world don't want to know Christ. If the world wants to know Christ, they'll accept the gospel. But they won't because they want to sin. So we know that the enemy is behind all of this. Let's turn back to Romans. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. And this is where we have to be at all times. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God through salvation for everyone who believes. For the Jews first and also for the Greek. This is where we have to be. We're not ashamed of the gospel. We've been engrafted. We, we have come into the full knowledge of who Christ is. And now that we know him, we shall be like him. Amen. Amen. And do the things that he did. Christ, now, now remember now, he left glory. Christ left glory to come on this earth to redeem man. With no problem. With no problem. Although the, the, the opposition was against him, he remained in doing what God asked him to do. Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which is which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. Again, it's a reminder. If we're crucified with him, it's no longer we that live. It's Christ that lives in us. If Christ is living with us, and we're abiding in him, what did he tell us we'll do? We'll produce much fruit. With the vine dress is the father that he will prune back. That will be pleasing to the father. Our heavenly father want to be pleased with us like he was pleased with the son. Mm -hmm. Who is the son? Christ. And it, 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 it's, it's, it's just so fulfilling and rewarding to hear these scriptures and know that we are one in Christ. Amen? Amen. As long as we're abiding now. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. And we'll wrap it up from that point. 2 Timothy. Be diligent, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Again, a reminder. This is a reminder. And as Paul was reminding the church of Corinth, he was talking about what he mentioned. 
for us to reconciliation from verses uh, 17 and 18, or 18 and 19, 20 through 21, we're ambassadors. We, we are to, uh, he, Christ was our reconciliation to God, and for us, he became sin for us. So, hearing this today and knowing this today, where are we? Are we still not grasping what we've obtained? Or do we still know? Are we still at a point in our life where, you know, well, I can live in the world, but I can also be a Christian too. That doesn't add up. Because the flesh and the spirit war against each other. They, they contrary. Because your flesh wants to sin. But the spirit that's in you wants to please your Heavenly Father. So, at this point in our life, we have to continue each day that the Lord see us. And as we read, we are crucified with Christ. It's no longer we that live, but Christ lives in us. And today, if you heard God's voice, if you heard the word of God, those that are watching, this is an opportunity to receive Christ. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The word today has been very powerful, enlightening, and rich, and rich. So this is an opportunity. Please do not let this opportunity go by. Because he said, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart.